Today on Coronavirus Explained, we're taking a closer look at the impact of COVID-19 on Africa. More than two and a half months after Egypt became the first country in Africa to confirm a coronavirus case, the outbreak has reached almost every nation on the continent of 1.3 billion people. Of Africa's 54 countries, only Lesotho has yet to report a case of the virus. There are currently nearly 45,000 cases across the continent. So that's relatively few compared to Europe and the US. So far, just over 1,800 deaths have been reported, which is much less than some models had predicted. The World Health Organization has warned that coronavirus cases in Africa could shoot up from thousands now to 10 million within three to six months. If there was an explosion in cases, there are barely five intensive care unit beds per one million people in Africa, compared to 4,000 in Europe. Public hospitals only have 2,000 medical ventilators between them to serve the whole continent. But some African countries bought time by locking down early before even their first death was reported, and sub-Saharan Africa has an average age of just 20, compared to 43 in Europe and 38 in the US. Well, to discuss this further, I'm joined from Addis Ababa by John Nkengasong, Director of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and from Nairobi by Monique Wasuna, Director of the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative. Thank you both for joining us here on the program. John, I'll begin with you. When this pandemic, um, we really understood the scale of it, it really, um, there were many people who were worried about how it would hit Africa. Just give us a sense of how things are on the ground now. In, uh, thank you for the opportunity to join uh, your program and contribute. On the ground now, as we speak, today there are 44,000 people that have been infected on the continent. Um, that um, has resulted to about 1,800 deaths. And uh, we continue to see a moving average increase. I mean, as of compared to last week, this week we are around 39% increase compared to last week. So I think we are still on the upward trend. It might delay it. But I don't think we, have, have, uh, we are on the peak of it yet. So it's an upward trend, but are you seeing hospitals across the region overwhelmed? Uh, not, not so. I mean, as I indicated, we currently have about uh, 1,800 deaths. And uh, I would not characterize it as an overwhelming situation, but just the number of uh, uh, hospital attendees is increasing and uh, countries are beginning to make uh, alternative arrangements on how to triage uh, patients that are, are visiting hospitals there. But uh, I would not characterize it as being overwhelmed at this point. Uh, Monique, let's come to you. You're in Nairobi. You're also a medical doctor. Just give us a sense of what things are like uh, there for you. Thank you very much for having me and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Yes, um, in Nairobi, uh, we have uh, tested about uh, 20,000 uh, people and uh, we have about uh, 465 cases and um, there are about 24 deaths and, um, and 167 uh, people who have recovered. So the issue is uh, that the patients that are coming, uh, they look uh, mild, have mild, mild disease and um, and at the moment, very few need ventilation. Uh, but the, what the government is doing is really, really something commendable because um, we have, uh, the, the government has a partial lockdown uh, in some, uh, in some, in, in the country and also uh, reduced uh, and, and also um, targeted lockdown in some, in some, in some, Areas. I mean, I, I so know Nairobi, I, I know, Monique, I know Nairobi quite well. I mean, doing social distancing in a place like Nairobi is, is virtually impossible. Yes, in the crowded places, it's really, really impossible, but the government is doing its best. Um, for example, even in the supermarkets, uh, you know, one gets in you get gloves and you know there's a distance that you have to be and they control the number of people going in but of course in the informal set settlements uh there's lots of people and that cannot be uh, really achieved and, and those uh, informal set in those informal settlements have you seen uh, many cases there uh, no no the cases rel are relatively small um 
I think that uh, in uh, Kibira, uh, in one of the uh, our settlements, I think uh, there are just a few cases uh, and other in settlements, but some of them have 24, some of them have two, some of them, you know, so the numbers, the numbers, the numbers are low. The numbers are really very and, John. And the government Let's just bring you back, back in, uh, John, because, I mean, this is quite extraordinary what Monique is saying. You know, some of these uh, settlements are so incredibly crowded. And so if there were cases there, it would be devastating. And yet we're sitting and waiting and watching. And as yet, as you say, Africa hasn't been totally overwhelmed by this. That is, you are absolutely right. I mean, our greatest fear has been all along um, uh, concerning what will happen if uh, COVID-19 hit uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, slums around capital cities like Kibera. And uh, it hasn't happened. And that is that continues to remain a serious concern for us, not just the, the, the slums uh, around capital cities, but also refugee uh, uh, centers and other informal settlements. And that continues to be fear. Now, the numbers are low, but I, I continue to uh, encourage countries to intensify their efforts because this is a very dangerous virus. It's a treacherous virus. It can seed itself quickly into a vulnerable population and explode very quickly, as we've seen in Europe and United States and China. So when, I think, when, you um, say, when you say, you know, it hasn't hit the way that we thought, why do you think that is? Well, we, 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 for now, we just don't know. I mean, there are several hypotheses for now. The first hypothesis is, uh, are we testing enough? I think we definitely, the answer is no. We are not testing enough as we should be. Uh, as a continent, we, we, uh, we've tested about 750,000 uh, people. That, for a continent of 1.2 million, or, sorry, 1.2 billion people, that is uh, nothing. And we should be increasing that, ramping up that testing so much. So our concern is, are we not seeing the full picture? And is what we are being blinded to going to hurt us going forward? I think that is key. Uh, the second possibility is that uh, countries took uh, drastic measures very early on. If you, uh, you study the reaction across the continent, uh, the continent from mid-March to uh, or early March to now, I mean, they reacted swiftly and in a drastic way. Some countries shut down. The, the, the system just when they reported a first case or even no case Even at no all. cases, and, yes. Um, I, I just want to, no because we're just uh, short on time, I just wanted to bring Monique back in. Um, Monique, do you think that the healthcare system where you are is prepared for any kind of outbreak if it does happen? <clears throat> uh, yes and no. I, I think that uh, right now we are prepared for the cases that are coming which are not very many, but as the pa pandemic grows and the numbers become more, I think most of the um, uh, African uh, health systems, even ours here in Nairobi, are very fragile, and with the very very few uh, health health workers as well. And um, so I think that coping will be a problem. But people have been innovative. People have not been sitting back. People have been able to. Um, innovate in terms of uh, testing kits, in terms of even ventilators, universities are trying their best and, uh, you know, try to improve the infrastructure. But I think what is key for us is uh, to, be a, to be able to be involved in, in the research, to try to understand what is happening, because I think people, not very many people understand what is happening. Certainly in our setup, we need to understand what is happening, so therefore, we need to, to be able to do research. For example, as I said, that the cases are mild. Yes. So we should, we should uh, therefore, uh, try to prevent these cases from getting uh, severe. So research is key, and that's why we have formed the coalition of um, clinical research globally, so that we will be able to address these um, questions like this in low middle income countries and be able to um, have Africans lead this kind of research. Yeah, indeed. To understand um, what's happening and to be able to mitigate. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we're, we're short on time, but it was great to talk to you, Monique and, and John.
Now, just a reminder of our top story. Four and a half million Italians have gone to work for the first time since Italy imposed an unprecedented national lockdown two months ago. In Milan, the city at the heart of the outbreak, rush hour passengers flocked back to the metro, but there were fewer people than normal on the trams and buses, and all wore the face masks that are now compulsory. We'll be back in 30 minutes' time with all the latest headlines.